Welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Today's March 7th, 2019. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, members present, Bernie, Rich, myself, and Kathy. Um, Mr. Decker is going to recuse himself from the first hearing. Uh, so the four of us will be voting. If it comes to a vote tonight. So the first, um, first thing on the agenda is Deerfield Industrial LLC of 5 Industrial Drive West, South Deerfield, Mass. Map 183, Lot 10. The applicant requests a driveway approach from the site of Atlantic Furniture Incorporated, located at 5 Industrial Drive West to Route 116, which is Sunderland Road. Driveway to be used to alleviate truck in vehicular traffic at Industrial Drive West and to provide a second means of ingress, egress for emergency vehicles. So at this time, I think I saw Matt. Matt, would you like to step up and add any other information or comment? Uh, I'm Tom Lesser, I represent Okay, I'm sorry, Tom. So I'll step up too. Okay. Just by way of background, it's a pre-existing curb cut. It's been in existence for a long time. Okay. It's had posts there most recently. There was an application to the to DOT, and DOT analyzed it from a safety point of view with regard to the trucks entering and exiting onto 116. They approved it. I think you have the DOT approval in front of you. Um, in January, the building inspector indicated that the applicant had to come before you for a special permit. So we've applied. My understanding from the building inspector, it's gone to the police department who have no problems with it. It's gone to highway department, which has no problem with it. And it's gone to fire department who actually thinks it's a great idea because it will allow access to the back of the building more easily. So in terms of the town bodies, they all approve of it. Um, the planning board didn't comment on it. And I think it should be, re it's relatively straightforward because it's pre-existing and all it's really doing is paving in accordance with the plans that went before DOP, DOT and that are before you. Uh, happy to one, answer any questions, though. Uh, one thing I have here is a traffic safety study done with a question mark. Was there a traffic safety study done? Um, DOT did that. DOT does that as part of their regulations. Okay, okay. that's what I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, that. if you look at their regulations, you'll see that they do it. That's, that's part of their standard and criteria. Okay. They do that analysis, and they're actually the best qualified people in the world to do it. Mm -hmm. Better qualified than if we hired somebody who might have some bias. They're the unbiased group. Okay, well, that was the only question. Everybody else, all the other committees, there's no comments for, from any, anybody else in town here. You know, whether it be the um, planning board or the board of assessors. Board of Health, there's no concerns. That was the only question I had. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No, I just know that, you know, there, there is an issue with DDIC, and you're mm -hmm. going to hear from them, I expect, tonight. But that's, okay. a, that's really a civil issue between us and DDIC. Mm -hmm. We have our difference of opinion on the approvals that they gave us and what we're allowed to do. Okay. But it's not, it's not a municipal matter. Okay. Guys all set? Yep. Okay, so at this time, is there anybody um, in the public in favor of what we just heard that would like to comment? Okay. Public comment, Frank? In favor. Oh. In favor. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yep. Okay, now we move to anybody in, in the public that's opposed to this. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my name is Felicity Hardy. I'm the attorney for DDIC. 
um, which is opposed to the application. Um, with me is Paul Olszewski and other members of the board uh, here tonight are Ralph Healy and Frank Sherburn and Rick Andrioli. And I serve as chair of DEDIC. Um, let me just um, say a couple of things. Uh, Mr. Olszewski has some remarks that he wants to share with the committee, so I don't want to um, duplicate what he's going to say. Okay. Uh, but uh, it is DEDIC's position that the application should be denied. It is our view that the curb cut is unsafe, it's unnecessary, and it was installed without uh, DDIC's permission, notwithstanding the fact that DDIC is responsible for regulating the uh, entrances and exits to the park, the layout of the park, and the buffer zone around the park. Um, so first of all, let me speak to the question about uh, the safety of the curb cut. Um, the curb cut was installed by Atlantic Furniture uh, without, as far as we know, a traffic study undertaken by a traffic engineer. I heard Mr. Lesser speak to some work that the Department of Transportation uh, might have done in connection with the application. I have no information about that. Um, and in fact, we had submitted a public records request to the Department of Transportation to find out what, in fact, they had done and what information they had received with respect to the curb cut and never heard back from the DOT. Not three weeks after the installation of the curb cut, there was an accident there. And uh, the, um, there was a truck that was exiting out of that um, curb cut it got hung up on the overhead wires that are um, they're strung across um, that part of the park, and uh, they took it. It took down a, a utility pole, um, and it's frankly uh, just lucky that the driver wasn't um, hurt, uh, nor uh, the electrical service or cable service or internet service uh, interrupted uh, for the other tenants of the park. Um, in our view, given the uh, amount of traffic and the speed of the traffic that is going on, that um, travels on Route 116, <coughs> there needs to be a really thorough analysis of whether or not it's safe to have another curb cut um, in uh, the park. It's also unnecessary. Um, the uh, DEDIC has never received any uh, complaints from any of the tenants about uh, trucks uh, having trouble entering or exiting the park. Um, no, we never heard uh, anything from Atlantic Furniture that uh, in, in advance of their installing this curb cut that they were having any trouble with um, their trucks getting in and out of the park through the existing street, which as you know is Industrial Drive West. Um, and the volume at the um, industrial park now is much less in terms of truck traffic, employee traffic, and so forth than it has been historically. And historically, one industrial drive west has always served, uh, functioned very well in terms of getting the trucks in and out of um, the uh, lots in the park. And then finally, I wanted to observe that uh, this... Um, Curb cut was installed without DDIC's permission. Um, the uh, protective covenants for the industrial park require that DDIC um, bless uh, changes to the site, changes to the park. Partially, the whole purpose of DDIC is to be able to regulate uh, the functioning of the park in a way that works for all of the tenants. There was never any uh, request for, um, for permission to do it, and in fact, the DOT uh, permit required Atlantic Furniture to get all of the permits that it was supposed to get before it applied for a curb cut with the Department of Transportation. Yet Atlantic Furniture never brought uh, an um, application to this board, to the planning board, or to DDIC without, uh, before applying to the Department of Transportation. Um, so uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Olszewski. It's our view that uh, the board should deny the application for special permit. I just wanted to provide a little history. Um, and, and Bernie uh, would know, being here that long, 
when the park was built, and I'll, I'll say I've been on uh, DDIC since 1993, and I worked with Jack Chesla, Ed Crafts, basically the founding fathers of this whole thing. And the park was laid out because it took state and federal money that, that, the, that the DDIC board was able to, to, to garnish and, and construct the park. But there was a specific purpose, a specific distance and placement of those two entrances because if you travel 116, when you're coming from, when you're going from west to east, you have a clear sight of both entrances. It gives you time. And the same can be said when you're going from east to west. When you're traveling, you, can, you have a plenty of time to calculate your speed if you have to speed up or slow down. In the late 70s and beyond, the West Drive saw the most traffic. And there was, I worked at, at the old Millis Falls Tool Company from 79 to 82. Millis Falls Tool Company at that time had a three shift operation. You had well over 800 employees, three shifts. You had the two four loading bays <coughs> on, the, on the west side of the building. That ran pretty much from early morning, but 24-7, but the truck traffic during the day. You had N&B Trucking at the time running from early morning to late evening with that whole terminal running back and forth. You had Cane's Oxford Pickle running out of the Bartlett uh, warehousing, and they were schlepping trucks between the warehouse and uh, the factory on, on Jewett Avenue. And then you had Fleet Pride with their trucks. And there was constant, so much more traffic. And in my years working at the tool company and also on DDIC, we never had to, attorney, um, to our attorney's uh, comment that there was never any complaints about access or the ability to get in and get out. Um, the area where the unauthorized, what I, unauthorized curb cut has been constructed, that was not pre-existing. Bernie, if you remember, when they were building the park, at the time there were tobacco barns along there. At the time, geographically, before they built the two roads, that there was just this area of vegetation that hadn't grown up. So they used that to get equipment in, trucks and whatever, and then once the plant with Miller's Falls Tool was built, which was the primary reason for constructing the park, they sealed that up, curb cuts, I mean, um, curb cuts, they, you know, the, the, they paved it and all that was, and that was the end of it. You might have noticed back uh, a while ago, there were four, four or five telephone poles, and those were placed there uh, because we had a strike in 1981, and we used to do that. I was in, ma in management at the time, and those were there to, uh, we used to use it to cut around the picket line. <laughs> so once the strike was over and they found that people were, you know, they didn't want it being used because you had to jump over the curb to, to get over there, which was illegal, number one. So that's why those posts were put in there. So I just wanted to, um, to say that. Truck traffic continues to be a source of activity, and it's even, you know, with Goulet trucking, that's pretty much a 24-7, Jeff's trucks pretty much run a lot. Yankee Candle is still very busy with their truck traffic in the warehousing. You, uh, at, at Fleet Pride and also Atlantic Furniture. Uh, I'll share with you this, the DDIC board members, their concerns, both of the board and individual members. Does approval, will this provide a precedence for possible future requests in the park? And to our attorney's comment, we are there as managers of the park to provide a uh, uh, a park that operates that benefits and, and is in the best interest of all. Be it Atlanta Furniture, be it, be it Jeff Goulet, whatever. We communicate, we talk, and we try to make sure that everything is fair and equitable on both the east and the west drives. We don't know because we have lack of, trans, uh, lack of uh, communication, no transparency in communications with, it, with uh, Atlantic Furniture or Mr. Vallone. It's what is the true long-term plan with the access? I mean, all these years, and you know, growing up, there was never an issue. And when the tool plant was running 24/7, the fire department—I never knew anyone complaining about the access to get to the back of the back of the plant on the east side. There, you know, luckily I, I never knew of any incidents, but so be it. Um, so I mentioned about the fact that no, there aren't any um, um, other you know property owners that are making. Um, well, well, let me let me state this. After Miller's Falls Tool or Ingersoll Rand sold the building in 1984, um, Diston, Rule Tool, and the rest, I, and, and that shortly before I joined DDIC, but all those companies that, that either were built, the owners of the property or tenants operating their, their businesses in there, there was never any request for what was, has been constructed. And the accident with the FedEx trailer and it clipped the, it clipped the, uh, the lower hanging wires and as a result snapped to the east 
the main one of the main poles, and for whatever reason, it did the transmission lines didn't break because that would have been pretty much a disaster. But my question is, one truck already hit, and I can't believe that this how this thing was built because you, you put another truck in there, it's going to do the same darn thing, or it could. I mean, if it did it once, and it was a small it was a small smaller FedEx tractor trailer, so you know I just can't believe the construction. Um, and you know, one of the things was, in the appeal we read, that it says alleviating truck and vehicular traffic when you've got, I don't know, f far less in the Atlantic Furniture Building, far less from the days of when you had 800 to close, you know, 800, 900 people working, you know, three shifts, and a second means of ingress and egress. And the biggest thing, one of the other thing is getting more into the technical aspect, and I'll finish with this, is if... If this, if this curb cut is considered, in terms of ownership, in terms of liability, um, safety, um, none of this stuff has been presented to us. And based on our rules and regulations, our protective covenants, and the like, we are, we are required to act upon this, to be presented. We are there to, to promote business development, but business development that provides safety for everyone who uses the park, who is a property owner and a tenant in the park, and the fact of the matter that we all of a sudden last fall uh, got a phone call and said, hey, there's a, there's a rough curb cut being cut you know, on, on the land there, um, took us totally by surprise. Never had any, any warning, any discussion. And uh, so that's, but, and I will reiterate to, uh, to our attorney, I'll finish with this, that in terms of the mass DOT, she is quoting what states right on the, the application. There has never been a traffic study. We haven't seen the results of a traffic study. Um, I'd like to know where that exists. So that's, uh, that's our stance. Um, like I say, I've been a member since 93. And like I say, we're trying to protect everyone in the park and be able to uh, accurate, uh, safely uh, operate business. So that's me. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Thank you. Anybody else with a comment you'd like to come up and speak? Yes. Yeah, I'd just like to say, with there seems to be, not to misconstrue this, but there seems to be the fear of what could happen in the future. And of course, this board has the right to condition any approval upon continued use by Atlantic Furniture. And if that changed someday in the future, and there's a fear of what might happen someday in the future, the, the board could, the, the, the the permit would no longer be valid. I'd just like to say that. Thanks. Any other comments, questions? Anybody have anything to add? Okay, well, at this time, I'll close the meeting to the public and we'll discuss it amongst ourselves. So it's um, 7 18. Yeah. You guys get a chance to look at all this stuff from the different boards. Bylaws. Mm -hmm. So Kathy just showed me our bylaws when we grant special permits. One of the concerns is safety.
I see those burning. Pass them down to Kathy. Thanks. Did you all read the letter from the Department of Transportation? We should all get it out so we mm -hmm. can understand if, if where mm -hmm. it's mentioned the traffic yep. safety part of it. Right. I haven't seen a copy of that. Okay. So this was. I'll pass Wait it. Wait a minute. Maybe it's right here. It was. It was in our the material sent to us. It's all the same. The these, same thing. Yeah, I think these are all. These are. You see anything on the traffic side? one part right that says it, this is in their permit from the department of transportation mm -hmm. adequate warning mm -hmm. signs traffic guns mm -hmm. erected right Traffic study? No. No. Okay, let's get, let's so make it so we can talk. Yep. Right, Richard, mm -hmm. finish. Yep. Because when I look at this, is mm -hmm. it a group or not? Yep. This is the one that where we get hung up, is the traffic right. flow mm -hmm. and safety. But they're, they're not required. Hmm? It doesn't say anywhere here where they require it. Right. Well, no, this is just consideration. We don't have, we, there's not exact requirement, but we just consider it. Sure, sure. Well, we're looking at the zoning bylaws right now, Rich, and it, uh, one of the criteria was um, traffic flow and safety, including parking and loading, is one of the considerations for granting a special permit. 
And right now we're trying to find, um, we've got mass DOT information here, but nothing about a traffic study. Um, Paul claims that they didn't have one done. Um, the, the person representing Atlantic Furniture says one was done. I said that I said the DOT has to. That's what the primary concern of DOT is: traffic study, mm -hmm. and they have all the figures and statistics about the flow of cars on that road at different hours as a state highway. But we don't, and DDIC does not either. Right, but they had to consider that in order to grant that, and in fact, they talked about the fact that they wanted to, to make sure that the view was sufficient in terms of cutting down shrubs. So they. Obviously, we're considered that that's the that's why you go to DOT. Traffic curb cuts are very hard things to get, actually. So we've got all this information, but nothing about that. But implicit in their regulations is they consider that, or they wouldn't have granted the curb cut. Like I stated, that's one of the internally. conditions here in granting a special permit that traffic flow and safety have to be taken into consideration. Sure, and the highway yeah. department took that into consideration, didn't have any objection, the police department didn't have any objection. But they wouldn't have allowed it to proceed. So, Mr. Chairman, if, if Ms. We're still discussing this amongst okay. ourselves. Thanks. Bernie, any comments? Concerns? Rich, I mean, uh, I would, I would assume that these guys would be. Mm -hmm. Me too. I was just combing right. through it to see if I had missed something when yeah. I first read it to see if I had missed a, mm -hmm. a reference to a study. They must decide that it's not, it wasn't relevant right. in the situation. Okay. Well, they yeah. did. They talked about the clearing of things and the right. There's another mm -hmm. on page three. They also talked about. Um, but no traffic study. No, no. Was but required about in the situation. I want to look through it one more time. Okay. <laughs> Frank, I'd like to have uh, Mr. Kalashevsky come up to the speaker. I got a question for him. All right? Okay. Mr. Kalashevsky? Rich, could you come to the table? Can you open it up yeah, again? Yeah, open up again. Yeah. I'd like to open the meeting up again so we can ask Rich. Uh, Bernie would like to ask Rich a question. Thanks. My question is, why are you coming to us? Why are they coming to us? The zone bylaw requires a special permit for traffic and safety, which would include the curb cut. Okay. They have a complaint from DETA, okay? Yep. That's the reason they're here. If the traffic study is missing, I would recommend to you postpone this hearing until they produce the traffic study. I mean, I think that's an important criteria in any decision. So is it safe to assume they did one and they just didn't put it in the letter? Don't know the answer, but if I was sitting on that board right now, I'd want that piece of paper in my hand. That says we did an analysis. The, to, no, no, the no. state, from the state, the state always does a traffic study. I just went through this one, Cumberland Farms. Yeah. We did multiple traffic studies. Mm -hmm. So... I can't imagine that there's no traffic study available. And I, well, that's what I was kind of getting at. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, my suggestion would be to... DOT seems very much in favor with the letter of support yeah. and everything, but they just don't have the study in here, right? Just a missing piece of paperwork. Right. If you're uncomfortable with it, mm. you have another yeah. hearing coming up at the end of the month, yeah. Yeah. you could postpone it until that next hearing mm -hmm. and go from there. I don't think it's... You can ask the people. I don't think mm -hmm. it's critical to make a decision tonight. Is the curb cut is not being used. So who would be responsible for getting the additional information? I, I would assume that the applicant. Mr. Valone's okay. attorney and people would be responsible for getting that curb cut copies of that documentation from the state. And I think Dedick would like to see that as well. I would yeah. imagine everybody yeah. would like to see yeah. it. Mm -hmm. okay. he, he's perfectly right. There are regulations that are written and there's protocol they followed. Okay, that doesn't mean all the I's are dotted and T's were crossed. Yeah. There could be one missing component, and it could be misfiled or not included. And I would recommend that you have all the documentation 
before you render any kind of verdict. Okay. Thanks, Rich. Thanks for your input. Now, since I opened it back up, you wanted to make a comment or? or no. no, well, Mr. Chairman, I was just going to observe that. Um, I don't know. I, I think maybe the board doesn't have enough information about what it was that the uh, Department of Transportation did or did not do with respect to issuing the curb cut. We just, it's just sort of like a, a blank. So it seems to me Mr. Kalashevsky makes a good point. If a traffic study was done in connection with the, uh, with the application for the curb cut, somebody has that, either the applicant has it or the Department of Transportation has it, and it seems to me that if uh, your um, jurisdiction requires you to evaluate the safety of this curb cut, that would be an important piece of information to have. Well, I'd like to see it just because it's one of the conditions of granting a bylaw right. is a granting a special permit. A yeah. special permit. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? I'll close the meeting back up to the public. I have one more thing, oh, Frank. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, there was a thing about the safety, and they were concerned about the health of uh, height of the wires there. Since there's an industrial area, they're supposed to provide enough of clearance for those wires. So someone needs to get on a stick that. Uh, Appeals to Eversource, but that wire, those wires need to be raised for they've, it's they've a safety issue. Raised. The wires have already been raised. They they've raised them at the date by Eversource. Okay. They raised them at the date of the accident. Okay. That, that I didn't see that because I had we had people watching and basically returned to my my conversations. I have names of folks that were there that that night repairing, uh, and they did it overnight. One thing, Bernie, you might notice on the West Drive, and if you notice it, I can't believe, and I won't name the construction company that built the curb cut, they didn't factor that in. Because on the West Drive, you have the same wires sloping. But if you look at the West Drive, and you go from out by Jeff Goulet's, and you come down, it slopes, and it grades. And then it dips, and it goes up. You go over the curb cut, it's just flat. There was no compensation, no compensation for uh, for height to wire. So you put another truck through there, you'll do the same darn thing again. There was, the, the wires weren't moved, you know. Please. I don't have my code book, so I can't check it. No, but I there know. is a specific oh, I know. height yes. that they have to be. But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is for all those years, how they compensated on the west and the east drives, if you look at both, they approach the wires where they would be hanging, and then the road takes a little bit of a dip, and then gets back up onto 116. So you either raise the wires or put a dip in the road. Or you have to adjust right. or you, have to, you have to mill the road down. But that wasn't done. If you look at that curb cut, there is no dip. There's no milling. It doesn't. Because that's one okay. of our, okay. right, isn't it say uh, utilities or something in there? It says adequacy of utilities and other public services. Yeah. So it's well, it didn't compensate that day because that FedEx truck flipped it. So okay. How, how, okay. Sorry. No. I, I want to close it to the uh, to the public, and I'd like to say that I think we need some more information. So, I think if we can all agree, the two things we want are one, the traffic study from the Mass DOT. If it's implied that it was done, we still would like to see something in writing. That way, it's not our necks. Uh, secondly, the wire situation, um, some sort of a um, measurement, yeah, assurance to us that uh, they're they're the proper height above the. The, the roadway, whether the roads dropped or the wires are lifted, one or the other. And then if those two things can be met, then we'll, we'll be happy to vote on it. Okay, I make a motion that we uh, ask for a uh, resubmittal of those two questions, um, and we'll set up another time. Okay. Second it. All those in favor? Yes. No? Nobody opposed? So that'll be um, scheduled for our next... ZBA meeting, which is two weeks. Two weeks. So what's the date on that going to be? 21st. 21st? 21st. Okay. So, okay. Okay. And before we get into the, um, the second um, item on the agenda, I just want to, I skipped right over us reading and accepting the minutes. I know we all read them. And I just want to make a motion that we accept the minutes of the last meeting. Yes. 
Second. Second. In favor? Opposed? Okay. Okay, so the uh, second item on the agenda is Hugh Mannheim of 311 River Road, South Deerfield, Mass. The applicant requests an appeal of the building commissioner's decision to allow renovations to an existing structure, cottage, located at 4B Boren Ave to use as a habitable building, map 175, lot 46. So, Mr. Mannheim, would you like to speak? The, the structure that we're talking about mm -hmm. was used at one time for a for a house. When um, after I bought the property, we uh, <clears throat> there was a, a bathroom that was in the structure. With a, there was a, a sink, a bathtub, and a um, a toilet down in the basement. And then there was a a pipe that went out to the brook. So we wanted to, or I wanted to fix that so there was no pipe going to the brook and hook up to the town sewer and and I was going to ask if we could do a little um, addition off to the side to make the bathroom because the, the cabin is uh, 12 by 24 and I thought it would be better to have a little addition on the side to put the bathroom and easier to run all the plumbing and everything else. So right now the, the house is evaluated at, or the cottage is evaluated at $6,000. And if we were to fix it, I'm sure that the town would be recouping more tax money from the, the, um, <clears throat> the rise in, uh, in evaluation. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm sorry if I missed this. No one, it's, oh, we're not asking questions mm -hmm. You can. Is it, yeah. is, are people living there now? Is it no, habitable now? No, nobody's okay. living there. But you're making it habitable. Well, we're asking to make it habitable. Okay, that's what you're asking. And, and it was habitable in the past. When was it habitable? When was the last time they were in there? Um, I don't know for sure, uh, but uh, I mean, I just have incidental knowledge of, of uh, of one gentleman who lived there for his, almost his whole life, and um, I believe that when Antosh has bought the property, he was still there, so maybe 10 years ago, five years ago, eight years ago. So by doing what you want, you're gonna end up with two dwellings on one lot, correct? There's, yes. Be three, well, yes, there'll be three. There are already two. So the distinction of Boron Avenue, it was for the fire department, I think, to know where the house was. So I'm not, I'm not asking for something new. I'm just asking to do what was there. So you want to renovate an existing building to make it habitable? I, I, want, to, I want to renovate a, an existing building that was habitable, <laughs> but was abandoned. Oh, OK. As was the house that we, was there when we bought the property. It was abandoned. And, so, and you gave us permission to do that. So there's two dwellings, the one that you're talking about and the one you want to fix up? Yes. Okay. That's what I wanted to get clear. The one okay. Up. But there's two no, occupancies there's already... right now, correct? Right. Well, okay. So it's a little confusing. Mm -hmm. There's the, the Polish deli is, so it is in one lot. In one lot, there would be three dwellings. No, it was up. It was not occupied for over two years, correct? I think once the once yes, the two, it, it was not occupied. For once you two years. once two years goes by, I think you lose all. Mr. Kalashevsky, am I correct in that? Now let me, if I may, I can clarify a little bit of this. Uh, 
Here we go. There's three buildings plus a barn in this lot that is one lot encompassed with the Polish Deli. Out the side of Boren Avenue is a single family dwelling that hasn't been occupied for 15 to 20 years. This dwelling he's talking about, or proposed dwelling, hasn't been occupied for 10 or 15 years either. It is not connected to the town sewer, okay? So in my day, I've never remembered it as being a habitable structure that we rented. The concern here is that there's three buildings on a lot and all are separate dwellings not connected together, okay? And this is what I'm trying to get the determination on. I don't even know if the sewer line is available or can be available to that particular dwelling. Uh, I, I explored that and it, and it is. Okay. So the other issue I have is if Mr. Mannheim choose to start renovations on that structure before applying for building permits. So Well we we did apply for a building permit and you, you gave us a building permit was never issued for that dwelling. You gave us a building permit for that dwelling no, to I fix gave the roof. building permit for the dwelling that Malcolm Sedell used to live in. I, I beg to differ. I, I respectfully do differ. Well, you gave okay. us a building permit that, that had the cottage and the barn okay. to fix I, the I roof. I won't debate whether you had a building permit or not. Right. But the fact is it's not hooked to the sewer, so you immediately have a condemned situation because there's no septic or sewer. And I believe you came looking to put a septic system in there at one point. Right, because that, we yeah. didn't know we didn't know that the other the other house was on the sewer. Yeah. So that pipe that was in that dwelling went to the brook at the cemetery. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the we did determination the here is if you want to have three buildings on one lot, it's multifamily, and I'd like to ask, do you have a plot plan of the lot with the buildings on it? No, it's in one. I mean that would that would do a um, lot to explain yeah, the whole situation. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's just the uh, assessor's card. I think Mr. Decker can answer some of your questions on the letters a lot. Is that adequate? I, I'd like to give you one here point out to the sure. people where... I, I brought the notes from our last time. Over here. I'd like him to identify the structures. This is okay. the Polish deli, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the deli. This, this, is, the, this is Malcolm's house. This, yeah. this is the barn, the okay? And then there's the barn. Okay. What's the other one? This, it, it not existing. It's gone. Uh, that's gone. Yeah. Okay. So this is gone. This is the deli with an apartment above. Okay. This is a single family dwelling over here. And, this, and that's when we gave it up. Gave you gave out to before. Okay. Okay. And this is the, the structure. That's the cottage. Yes. Just the. Understand now, Mr. Mannheim, what you were what you're asking for by the photos and yeah, what Mr. Helpful. Kalaszewski explained to us. So, um, is there anybody in public who is for this proposal? Anybody? Mr. Excuse me, Frank. Mr. Mr. Kalaszewski, do not leave. I have a question for you. I'll get back in your distance. <laughs> he needs to get going. To go. Okay, just quickly. What is the what is the law on? Occupancies on them. How many can they have? How many people? No, how, residencies. We got. He's asking for three. I thought it was just two. It's multifamily by special permit. 
Okay. Okay. So you've already given them one multifamily. This would be the second thing, which would, the lot is non-conforming, okay, by square footage and frontage. You do not have frontage and square footage for three lots, okay? If that could be subdivided down into three lots, there'd be no question. But I don't believe with configuration you can subdivide that down and get three existing lots out there. Correct? Okay. Uh, I mean, I might respectfully disagree, but... Okay. Uh, all right. And uh, there's an old statute that deals with ways in existence, okay, that aren't public ways. But it existed for a long time, and it's in the statute. I haven't read it recently, okay? And if, if, if I were to own the land, right, I would certainly would have got a hold of a surveyor to actually survey the property so I could understand where all the lot lines we, are. We did do that. And you did a survey? Yeah. And where is the survey? Is it? Well, the survey is only for the entire piece of property. Yeah. What but, Bob is alluding to is the same thing I'm trying to say. Just in different words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and there was a distinct debate a number of years ago in, in town on another parcel of property where the building inspector did not want to issue a permit. Somebody brought it to my attention. I was not on the board at the time. And I showed him a section of the state law and I said, you should look at this and give it to your lawyer and then see what you can do. And eventually the, the building inspector issued the permit. Okay. So the point of the way in existence is there is no frontage. That's right. This particular piece of property has frontage on their street, so I don't know how much frontage, but it's I don't either. Foot. But you know what I'm getting yeah, at. It's 100 foot for each lot, so it depends on how you want to look at it. Do you want to look at it that it needs to be subdivided into three lots under an ANR with the planning board, or do you want to issue them a permit to continue on under a multifamily development thing? Normally, it's not detached buildings for multifamily usage. But they're existing structures. Existing structures. And, and so, you know, that adds another thing. But my only question is, do we have a, a, something in the bylaw that requires a certain number of square footage for a, a unit? That's gone. That's gone now? There's, there's a state requirement for square footage for living space, bedroom space, and kitchen area and bathroom areas. So I don't know, unless we're out seeing a drawing, I don't know if it complies to that, okay? Um, I don't either, but it used to be like 720 about years ago. Yeah, that, that's gone a long time ago. Okay. Uh, the present thing is, uh, I'm just gonna, it's like a bedroom or a living area has to be at least 120 square feet, plus the kitchen, plus the bathroom, okay? So and we're talking, what was the dimensions? 12 by 24. So I, that's the second question. Uh, my math even is if, slow, if I'm if getting If you did pass it, it would be pop up back up again, plot plan, and the other thing is, it has to be brought up to 100% code compliance because it would be a total rehab. I don't know how it's electric, I don't know how the electricity is powered by it or anything like that, I have no idea. I don't know how the water gets there, I don't Thank you. Okay, thanks, Thank Rich. You. Thanks. Okay, so anybody uh, opposed to this would like to come up and speak? Barb? I, I don't know if I'm opposed or against. Okay, well, if you'd like to come up to the table and speak, thanks, you. Certainly, certainly we'll, we've got time to listen to you. I, in all the years that we lived there, that I didn't know what he was referring to at first as the cottage, mm -hmm. but now it was used as a storage for all the years that I remember growing up. So I don't. Just pardon me, real quick. Can you say your name and Barbara your address? Barbara Stahelski. Because um, I'll have to do the notes later, and I okay. need to know these things. Okay. I was a boron, and I lived um, on Thirty Nine okay. There Street, Thank above you. where the deli is now. Okay. Um, my family owned that property for many, many years. And I do not recall anybody ever living in that cottage. We used it as a storage. It may have been long, long time ago. 
but I do not recall that. Where Malcolm lived, yes, and that's what I thought he was referring to as originally getting a permit and refurbishing it. Mm -hmm. or yeah. and that, we did discuss that. That was like that six was months the ago. Last time. Right. Yes. So this cottage, to me, would have to have an addition to because it is would not be conforming mm -hmm. in order for somebody to be, you know, living in it. It's way too small. So, um, Thank you. It, uh, as far as water and all of that, I don't know how that is connected. But. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Well, if there's no other comments, we'll um, close the meeting to the public and talk about it. Okay, um, close the meeting to the public, 752. If you guys get a chance to look through all this stuff. Yeah. You got a chance to look through all this, or you're familiar with it? Or? Well, I uh, asked Pat Kroll to pull the old file you guys approved mm -hmm. before. Last one here. Okay. But this that one that. was just to renovate the existing building. Right, the Malcolm Sedell's old dwelling. No increase in the footprint, correct? No. And this one isn't an increase in the footprint at all. It's asking for is to be allowed to renovate. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He mentioned adding a bathroom, adding mm -hmm. something that sounded like it might be additional, additional footage. Frank, I don't I think as long as it was limited just to that footprint, um, you know, it would certainly clean up somewhat of an eyesore and what have you. But you, we should, if the board chooses to do it, uh, to restrict it on the rest of the land so no, no further subdivisions or additional structures to that property. Going forward, we don't know about water or sewer to that building. Well, the sewer is Mrs. Reese's house. Which she was a born, was across the street there. The Cape Cod house that uh, um, Kathy Crook owned before she passed. Mm -hmm. uh, I assume that has sewer. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, so I would assume there's sewer there. Okay? Mm -hmm. Or there's sewer at their street. And Worst case scenario, the trunk line is in a book. <laughs> okay, so uh, you we know, don't have to evaluate that. We just they, that would be something they'd have to take care of. They'd the have to take care of that, but right. they would have to comply with all the board of health and all the other to get the sewer hooked up, to get the yep, water hooked. Yep, and they probably have to pay a sewer entrance fee at this point. Yeah, and uh, so this is just whether or not we'll give them the permit to explore to fix, doing to all fix that. Fix the building. Now I don't know there with the condi what other conditions like keeping the same footprint or whatever. Mm -hmm. But one of those buildings down there was taken and broken in, in, to a, a separate part and moved to Porter Street, from what I understand, uh, 75, 80 years ago. <laughs> it was a bigger structure there that was separated and moved to Porter Street. I am told, I don't know it for fact. But there are people in town that have told me the story. And I think I could take it to the structure where it is today. <laughs> so this, they've checked appeal. Mm -hmm. So it's a little different than having to go through all the different categories for those, for special permit parents. Is there additional information? Yeah, you guys have any comments or questions or yeah. you know how you feel about it? Yep. Okay. Rich, you know how you feel about it. We prepared to vote. 
Yeah, I just want to make sure he doesn't come in and want to run a, put a unit in the barn next. Mm. So that's why I want to make sure that you do that. So when we, when we state how we're voting, does it have information behind it? Information. Like our findings, why we are mm. I'm, I, I've got concerns about what Rich said okay. with the frontage. Okay, I'm just making sure that, mm -hmm. we, that we all know what yeah. we go through. Yeah, everybody's going to have concerns. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I think we're ready to vote. I make a motion we vote. Close the meeting and vote. I all right, you see. Let's, okay. let's vote. Okay. All right. Is there a vote? I vote no. Yeah, I'm a no. No, I am a no as well. Denied. No. No. Well, you don't need my vote at this point. No. Okay. 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 So now this is the question. Um, that we're paying taxes on the buildings. So you won't let me fix the building? Or you will let me fix the building as long as it's not happening. Yeah, I would have no problems with, with the repair to the building. All right, so so Mr. Kalashevsky can issue me a, a building permit? I would assume so. Yeah, that's so it, it, is, right. it, it would be the, well, no. That's why he didn't give me a building permit because well, he wanted you guys. Because you, you listed here that you wanted it to have be a habitable right. building. <clears throat> if you wanted to make repairs or renovations to it uh -huh. as a barn or a storage <clears throat> building. How about as a cottage? As a what? Cottage. Cottage? Cottage. Cottage that's, that doesn't have a bathroom. That's considered a habitable building, I believe. Well, cottage. so you guys have had it on the tax bill for how many years as a cottage? Uh, I'm not on the, to have anything to do with taxes. Well, this is the zoning board. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. So the way to do this is to make Boron Avenue a real street, yes? Then we would have frontage for the cottage, and we would also have two building lots. I think uh, Mr. Kalashevsky offered a couple of different scenarios, one of them being subdividing the lot, and you get into frontage requirements and that sort of thing. Uh -huh. Um, I, I would speak to him and ask him what your options are, what your intentions are, and then what are your options to do it in, in a right way so that there are no flags or any problems. Uh, okay. That, that would be my suggestion. Thank you for your time. Thank You're you. Welcome. Okay. Um, I don't see any correspondence. Um, then the, the other um, item on the agenda was a discussion about possibly changing our meeting nights. We have a couple of uh, board members who cannot make it on the first Thursday of the month. Okay. Um, so um, we I, could... I replied back. Mm -hmm. They're all, all Thursdays are the same to mm -hmm. me, it just okay. as long as I know in advance. Okay. What about you guys? Um, I would be in favor of the second. Um, that way we'd know that everybody has an opportunity to make it. Okay. And two people who yes. can't go have an opportunity. Yeah. And, that, and then if the second doesn't work for some reason, uh, the last Thursday is also the Conservation Commission, but I don't think that's a problem. It's a small committee and, you know, between the cafeteria and here. Okay. Um, we can so, certainly share. So, the, how do we get that change? Do we just give feedback to? Pat? No, we make a motion. Make a motion. Okay, we make, we a make a motion. Okay. okay. I make a motion that we change our meetings from um, the first Thursday of the month to what do we say? The second. Second. To the second. With the backup being the fourth. And backup sure. being the fourth. Okay. okay. I second that. Favor. Opposed. That makes sense. Okay. No other business, so I think we can. Before before everybody leaves, so um, uh, come by here. I gotta find this form for the first one and make sure that everybody signs anything. I don't okay. think. Yeah. Right, we just gotta make sure we have all of our paperwork signed and ready okay. for tomorrow. Okay. Motion yeah. to adjourn. And make a motion to adjourn. Second it. 
I had a question. I can't remember. I forgot what I was going to ask. So we finished? Yeah, go ahead. Motion to adjourn. I'll accept. Eight o'clock, meeting's over.